Live from the studios of Coefficient Media in Jackson, Michigan, today's episode is brought to you by Coefficient Media. That's right. This is episode number 60 of the Android Tech Show. This week we're talking about the Pantech Breakout, the cheapest 4G phone that you can get on the Verizon network. And we're going to talk about uh, why Microsoft makes more money on Android than Windows Phone 7. It's for you to decide. Long intro. This is the Android Tech Show. Every week we bring you the latest news in Android-based technology. To join the conversation and watch live, visit theandroidtechshow.com. Now, let's start the show. Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Android Tech Show. Yes, I am Lane. And I'm Dave. That's how we roll around here. We have names. Yes. <laughs> Uh, this episode, we, we have a couple news stories to cover, you know, just fairly quickly. And then we're going to, uh, move on to the review. Yeah. Um, that, that is, that's what we do on this show. Not much news this week, is there? Eh, there's, there's plenty uh, of news. There was plenty of news. Uh, we <laughs> completely covered the ice cream sandwich update in the Android app show. Yeah. So if you want to hear, deal. if you want to hear about that, all about it. Have you got your tasty fingers on the, uh, ice cream sandwich yet? No. No, I haven't. I've seen some of the emulators in action, though. I did see that they ported it to the uh, Galaxy S2, which isn't that much of a surprise. Very it's kind of similar to the... So what phone is that on? That's on the... The Galaxy Nexus. Galaxy Nexus. And when did that one come out? Just just this last week. Last week. Yeah. It's a good phone, I must say. It's pretty impressive. Even more of a curved screen than the uh, than the last one. You know, the last Nexus. So is it actually a curved screen? Yes. Like the glass itself? The glass is curved. The actual pixels are curved along the glass. What? Yeah. The pixels are curved? Yeah. The pixels are, you know, they're on the glass. They are curved. Like an inverse mirror ball? Uh, Yeah. Concave, I think, is what that's called. (laughs) That's awesome. There you go. I remembered that from school. (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, but we have some news to talk about this week, of course. Uh, I guess we should pat ourselves on the back a little bit. 60 episodes. Yeah. Booyah. We could have gone farther if we made one of these every week, <laughs> you know, but that's not how we roll. Hey, that's not you what know, we do. you can only do so much, and there's only so much to talk about. That's true. That's true. And we don't want to, I mean, we could have, but then we would be sending out stuff that's boring. I nah. mean, like, we don't want to send out, like, a sh- we don't want to do a show just to do a show. We want to give you value. We want to make sure you, the listener, is not wasting your time. Just <laughs> must ramble on about That's a nice grammar things. there. <laughs> huh? You, the listener, is not wasting your time. You, the listener, I have a little bit of a cold, so things might <laughs> not <That's> come <laughs> out right. All right, all right, all right. So the first story, the first story I want to talk about. You might pick that long up off the floor there first, but uh, the majority of all Android phones, not just the United States. The uh, figure is 53% in the United States, 55% worldwide, are paying a licensing fee to Microsoft. <gasps> Sue happy. Yeah. But, well, okay, well, we talked about this before. Microsoft already makes more money off of Android than they make off of Windows Phone 7. That's a no-brainer. The licensing fees that they're negotiating are higher or equal to the licensing fees they get for Windows Phone 7. And, of course, we all know Android is far outselling Windows Phone 7. It's not even a competition at this point. So it makes me kind of feel bad for Nokia, except that I don't. Um, But my problem is it's getting kind of ridiculous because, you know, we're, again, 53% in the United States, 55% worldwide. You know that Microsoft is pushing for 100%. Yeah. So if they say that they're infringing on – the Android is infringing on its intellectual property, it's not going to stop. No. They're going to go completely – you know, blanket, boom, kind of cover everybody. So Android's probably one of the best operating systems Microsoft's made. Yes, yes. Money off of. It's funny that, you know, Microsoft made those Windows 7 commercials with people saying, I, this Windows 7 and I made it. They yeah. should be running, this is Android and I made <laughs> it. <laughs> they just have, like, people that work at Microsoft or whatever saying that. This is Android and I thought of it. But, you know, I got to say, as much as I hate Microsoft for taking money out of... 
you know people's pockets essentially it's this the, the cost gets passed on to us as android users it's a lot better than what apple's doing apple is just trying to stomp it out saying yeah. no you stole this from us it's not a legitimate operating system uh you guys need to just be banned give me my ball back and i'm going home yeah we don't want your money that's what steve jobs says we got enough money we make enough money well, that's not we want you to anymore. stop stealing our ideas he's not saying that anymore though no well that's what he said that's what he had said yes yes the book keeps saying it for him though oh really is that kind of stuff in the book? Yes, is that's it, in the book. It's like really like... Yeah, he's like hammering hard that. on Android saying that you know, they stole our intellectual property and they, that he's willing to go thermonuclear or nuclear really? to stop it. Nuclear? Nuclear. Nuclear? And I'll say it right. Nuclear? Nuclear. Nuclear. But yeah, he's he was willing to go all the way, which... Huh. I mean, hello, we should believe it. You know, they tried well, to block yeah, it in Europe know. and Australia and all this other stuff's going okay. on. So now they're trying to block it in the United States as well. Uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll see how that ends up turning out, though. We've covered enough patent stuff on other stuff, uh, other yeah. shows. But this is Some this is news. crazy to me, though. Again, it's past the tipping point. Microsoft is now locked in all these people. Yay. But we knew it was going to happen since they started, you know, hounding Linux distributors way back when saying you guys are right. violating our IP. Of course, Android's based on Linux, so it is fair game plus some other stuff that Android's doing. Well, that's how they make money. Yeah, but there's an argument to be made that you shouldn't be making money like that. Innovate yourself, yes. you know. Software patents suck. All right, so good news. Good news now. Good update news. Good update news. See, when, with the phones, we all there's always this murkiness. Oh, yeah. Who's getting updates? What? The great news. It seems to me that all these honeycomb tablets, <laughs> even if they haven't been announced yet or whatever, that they're all getting updates to yeah. ice cream sandwich. That's and, awesome. And we're talking about Asus as confirmed, Asus Tech or whatever. How, Asus. You know, yeah. They confirmed that their honeycomb tablets will be uh, upgraded to ice cream sandwich by January. What? So this upcoming January, not 2013, I like 2012. I like it. Heck yeah. And as far as updates go, uh, this is well known in the like elite community of Android. The Asus comes out with updates the quickest. Mm-hmm. Like They are the quickest non-preferred uh, manufacturer. Like They're not Motorola. Motorola has the Zoom they launched first, you know what I mean? So they, they get all these updates first from Google. Uh, but as far as when that source gets released and then when the manufacturer applies it to their device and releases that update, Asus is number one, let me tell you. Um, so I'm pretty excited about that. But Acer, they are also Acer. very good too. Really? Uh, they have also confirmed that their tablets are going to be getting ice cream sandwich in January. So Acer's just had a, a slightly less... Uh, long track record. So their their track record has been good as well, but not as robust. Asus is uh, long and great. So, uh, but this thing with Acer though means that you can go buy an ice cream tablet, ice cream sandwich oh, tablet, oh, so for three hundred twenty nine dollars at Walmart right now. Like big ice cream, and it's a seven inch screen uh-huh. and it three hundred twenty nine dollars. Okay, so. And, the, and we're not talking about, you know, a stripped down processor, this or that. We're talking about the full bore, one gigahertz dual core processor, uh, seven inch screen, which actually runs a little bit snappier than the 10 inch screen devices because it's pushing less pixels, yeah. uh, but still looks great. Uh, you'll have to wait a little bit for the upgrade because, of course, it runs Honeycomb right now. But as soon as January comes around, boom, ice cream sandwich on this thing. Uh, for my money, it's the best thing going. Does that have HDMI out? Yes, it does. So you're going to be getting one next week? I am totally all over that. <laughs> Here you go. Give me the keys. There we go. That's Michigan bankroll. Yeah. <laughs> no, really. That's so you can go buy one. Awesome. I am all over that. They got them in stock at Walmart, too. I'm telling you. Why don't we go pick one up right now? Open 24 hours a day. I even installed our app on the... Uh, Who stole my money? Somebody stole my money. It was me. But <laughs> Already took my cut. 
they they have one on display at Walmart, and I install their app on there. <laughs> so <laughs> it doesn't have you know. There's no Wi-Fi there, but I opened up the hotspot on the phone just yeah. so I could get a connection, nice. and then went on and logged in to my account and installed the app. That's beautiful. And then I took my account back off because I don't want people yes. buying apps on there. So that's a warning to anybody else that decides to do that. So that's that's really there's not a lot of news that we wanted to cover, but. Uh, of course, with the ice cream sandwich stuff, again, go to the Android app show, watch that episode. Uh, it'll fill you in on all the ice cream sandwich details. They're awesome. And I spent the entire episode talking about it, so I'm not going to talk about it here. Uh, but we do have a device to review this week. We do. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, this is the Pantech, the Pantech Breakout 4G. Uh, Pantech, a lesser known brand. You know, uh, but the cool thing about this, this is the cheapest, the cheapest 4G phone that you can get from Verizon. Kind of cool. Yeah. And it's a four inch WXVGA screen, right? DVD quality. And I'll see, I'll get the unlock here. Some cool stuff. So, uh, it has an innovative lock screen. I'll go ahead and go back to that. Uh, it's kind of, it kind of has some ice cream sandwich elements that we saw, uh, where you can drag, uh, different icons from the bottom of the screen up into the lock area, and then it will launch into that icon. Again, that's also kind of similar to what's in Cyanogen mod, but like you want to go to the phone, like if you've missed a phone call too, it'll have a number right on there. So to tell you how many, uh, phone calls you missed. The lock's weird. So you grab that. Drag it up into the circle, what? and then boom, you're inside your phone uh, <coughs> right away. You don't That's have funny. to unlock and then try and fish around for That's it. That's smart. Uh, the other thing I kind of like, too, has in case of emergency, which I don't have set up on here, but you know the ice number? Yeah. I mean, everybody knows about that stuff, right? Well, all you have to do is one click, and it will it pops right up with that information, and you can click on it to call. Oh, that's cool. But the dang thing keeps... Locking up, and it doesn't let you use the phone. Without it. But again, these these apps don't launch though, unless you know You're if you have it locked, like a passcode or whatever. Then it won't it won't launch. You'll have to put mm-hmm. in the passcode. Yeah, so yeah. don't think it gets around it. The one thing I have a strike against it on here though, it has the regular email app instead of Gmail, uh, yeah. and you can't change that. Uh, you can't change any of these uh, to whatever. Uh, yeah. But, you know, like the regular lock screen, it has unlock and it has the, the mute lock. Ooh, but it looks that. a little bit different. Like, it rotates. Fun, fun, fun. Boom. That was easy. So, some of the things on here, I'm just going to be honest with you. They stole a lot of stuff from a lot of other Android manufacturers. So, the appearance of the taskbar up here at the top when it's, you know, closed, uh, looks just like the HTC Sense taskbar. So pretty, pretty darn close. Um, but you open up the notification screen here, and it looks a lot more like Samsung's setup or the setup that LG stole from Samsung that's now yeah. in this Pantech. Uh, but it's, it, I am a big fan of the widgets up here, though, so I won't knock them too hard because I love it. I got it on Cyanogen Mod. It was one of the best things I think I ever saw come up, and it was on the Samsung f- phone first, I think. So yeah. that's that's by my fuzzy memory. Um, it has several widgets on here to change settings across the top, but it also has this little button up here in the top right corner. You click that, and boom, a whole nother row comes out for things like airplane mode, uh, your display settings, mobile hotspot, Bluetooth settings, and sound settings. Genius, absolutely genius. And as you pointed out, Dave, you know, you close it, you open it, it's still there. So if you want it there all the time, it can always be there, or boom, you minimize it up. Mm-hmm. And again, unfortunately, you can't swap around. Swap around. Yeah. None of this changes. Like, I hold that down. I can't drag mm-hmm. it or whatever. It's not how it works. Oh, well. So, whatever. Um, let's see. What what else should I talk about? The, the home screen looks a lot like TouchWiz. Looks like the Samsung slash whatever LG stole from Samsung <laughs> setup yeah. uh, with the four on the bottom with the app launcher on the right side, <laughs> you know, similar color setup and all that other good stuff. Uh, the dots on the top, you, you know, even the clock, all this stuff. I mean, this Looks is kind of weird. Classic touch whiz though. This yeah. is a hundred percent touch whiz. Um, 
let's see down here let's talk about these buttons it's hard to see them on the camera there but they're all physical uh they're plastic menu button over here in the left physical. corner and a plastic search key on the right side and in the middle there's like this circular thing it's like a semicircle with a dip or something i don't know uh, but it has grooves in it like a like a record it's just not there it is has grooves in it like a record oh, yeah. but it's the home button and the back button uh really the two buttons you use most often right here so yeah. it's again i don't like physical buttons on the phone but there is something nice about when you whenever you're not paying that close of attention it's easy to find this home back button you know i'm gonna wake it back up again i guess i didn't that was the screen dimming but you can hit the home button real quick or hit the back button, you know, just kind of toggling back and forth on <coughs> on here. Now, where was that power button again? Yeah, that's the that's the other thing. I'll, I'll give you a tour around the edge of the phone. Yeah, tour. Uh, down here on the bottom, this is a dedicated camera button. That's cool. Halfway up is the power button. It's Halfway the, on the side. Yeah, the wake slash lock button. Uh -huh. Kind of weird. So you press that to turn off the phone. Uh, and then you have... Up here is the charge door. Yep. You have to get your little fingers in here and wrestle it Pry with your it. fingernails to get it pulled open. Oh. I'm not a fan of these. I've talked about it before. Swingy this door. is going to break right off. Mm -hmm. So, And it's kind of a, a bugger to get back closed. Nothing along the top whatsoever. No. Uh, headphone jack on the side, volume rocker on the side, and a voice command button well, that's nice. on this side. That's really cool. Uh, it is nice, except that it only works with the built-in voice command app, which mm. is, uh, you know, it's by Nuance. It's yeah. powered by Nuance, so it's good. But it would be nice if it let you set either Vlingo or Google's voice search app to that. You know, like it, right. generally if speaking, if you unlock the phone here, if I hold down the search key, if I hold down the search key, <laughs> it'll pop up with see with Vlingo and voice search. Yeah. And I, you know, I thought, you know, with that little microphone and stuff on there, that that would be a handy thing to, uh, to make that what do. What does it look like? No, but what's that? The microphone. Yeah. It looks just like, uh, the new icon, <coughs> okay. you know, for voice search yeah. slash Siri. It looks like the Siri mic. <laughs> uh, but here's the, here's the one That's giant nice. thing I have against it. It's a nice camera. It's a nice camera, but th there's no flash oh. whatsoever. So, 5 megapixel camera, does 720p video recording, uh -huh. um, but no flash. Mm -hmm. And the bag here, I don't know if you can pick this up on the camera. I think you can a little bit. There we go. It's got, like, some weird rubberized, like, very rugged... Textured you know, you plastic. Rub yes, and it's, it's nice. It feels nice in your hand. It feels like it's not going to go anywhere. Yeah. You know, and you can... Let me rub it up by the microphone, too. You hear that? What are you doing? Oh. oh, that's just my phone. Yeah, that's the sound of my finger rubbing your on phone. the back. Your phone, huh? Finger rubbing your phone. You have to clarify. Yeah, it finger rubbing like the phone. For those of you not watching the video, sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, one of the other cool features that they have on this that you don't see on all phones uh, is this modes setting on the home screen. So you just hit the menu button. Click on mode. Hmm. Yep, click on mode. And there's current mode. Oh, I want to go up to all these other ones here. They are basically, huh. it's like having different home apps installed. Totally different icon setups. Totally different backgrounds. You can customize all of them. So you can set something for like when you're in the car or you're at work or you're at home. Uh, totally change your setup. So and it's it's all done on the fly right there. I love it. That is cool. I really do. Um, let's see. I really I can't talk about this enough. <coughs> I hate having this wake lock button on the edge. Yeah. Uh it's convenient, especially if you have a smaller hand. It's convenient to reach it, sure. I'll give you that. Uh but for somebody that's used to having a wake lock button on the top, or even those new uh droid phones that's on the other side yeah. over here or on the top edges, I don't know. But halfway down, that's kind of a mistake, I think. You know, we'll see. Yeah, so the Samsung ones are kind of like that, but it's more on the side. Yeah. On the other thing, the typing on here. All right, let me bring up 
You can, of course, disable the sounds. Uh, and it comes with a swipe keyboard, which, you know, is different from this. Um, but this here, I mean, when you click on it, can, uh, could you hear that? Yeah, bad stuff. Again, I'm typing. You hit enter. I, that's that's incredibly loud. You can't. Do it again. Yeah, you can't privately text anybody. On the, you know, on the train or something, because you're like click, 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 click. And again, of course, everybody knows, or at least advanced users know, you can disable those sounds by going in into the keyboard settings. So I can show you that real quick. Everything clicks. Yeah. Let's see. Sound. Uh, there should be audible touch tones. Okay, that's for your that's for your dialer. Audible selection is what all these sounds are. Whenever I I click stuff, uh, which will stop that. So now it's not going to make those sounds. Uh, but if I go down here to uh, language and keyboard, we're going to want to go to the Android keyboard and sound on key press. Boom. Disable that. So now, if I go home, open up the task switcher here and go to the browser <coughs> and type in stuff. Nothing. No sounds. So I highly recommend you do that because it gets very annoying very quickly. So the last totally awesome thing I want to cover are the Pantech widgets on the phone. Uh, these guys have really, really outdone themselves. So, of course, you know, the widgets are kind of a semi-ripoff of the TouchWiz stuff, but what do you expect at this point in the review? I think you've caught on that it's a it's a big ripoff, but they do a good job at least. Uh, these things you can log in with, you know, Twitter, MySpace, if you're into that sort of thing, uh, Facebook, and it consolidates that down. Of course, you see that on a lot of phones. But this year, Task Killer, uh, it's a special <laughs> widget, you know, underneath the Pantech widgets. And this is the calendar. Look at this calendar. Yeah. It's beautiful. Uh, it's got all the days right there. Calendars are uh, sexy. Let's see. You can click on them to change days. It keeps today's oh. date highlighted. Oh. Let's see. I can click on I, 25th and it pops up there. I really like a well done calendar. Yes. Like, just gets me going. <laughs> it's weird. So let me take this widget off here so I can show you. It's very weird. Long press on the home screen. Of course, you have your Android widgets down here, but there's mm. Pantech widgets up top. Mm. And instead of having a slide up oh, nice. screen like the Android one, they're all down here on the bottom, and you have to flip through them. It's kind of cool. Yeah, it is pretty cool. Uh, so let's see. I want... It creates a it. synergy with that bottom button. You see it kind of loops yeah, it around. Yeah, it does. I said synergy. I've been, to it. I've been in too many meetings. Event notifications. So you hold down on it. Uh-huh. Drag it up, drop it on the screen, and then oh. boom. Calls, text messages, emails. That's easy. So, And it leaves it down here, too, so you can go through you know, all your other stuff. But the calendar one, let me pull this up again. The calendar I like because I'm a stickler for calendar widgets. Yeah. So let me grab that calendar widget, pull it up here, drop it. You get three options. Small one, large one medium one so you can huh. pick you know what suits you that one's kind of oh, cool there wasn't enough room on the screen oh. this calendar widget takes up the whole screen that's kind of annoying so Pantech flip it over here calendar can you squish it down some can you like no you can't resize something? you gotta you gotta wait for honey or for ice cream sandwich to do that you can resize. do it on my phone well, I mean, in the default way, you know, some some of the manufacturers allow for resizing. Of mm. course, you can get third party home screen things, but like if you get a third party oh, home screen, then you can't resize these because you can't use the Pantech widgets or whatever. Oh, catch twenty two! Yeah. These these uh, manufacturer widgets that come on here extra, uh, like on HTC and stuff like that too. Uh, when you install a third-party home screen, it doesn't let you use the Ugh. HTC widgets. Ugh. So, bad news bears. Yeah. So, again, to review, it's a great phone. Uh, it's the cheapest 4G phone that you can get on Verizon. And, again, it is real 4G LTE. 
blazing fast speeds. I mean, I'm talking about like 20 megabits a second. <coughs> really wow. good stuff. Yeah, I mean, just blows away our uh, land connections around here, the cable connection. Mm-hmm. Uh, the only serious drawback that I could pin against this is the lack of a camera flash. I mean, the phone runs smooth. It's a great interface. They have a lot of innovative widgets. Again, I like the calendar widget. I like a lot of the setup. Of course, they copied a bunch of stuff from other people, but they did it well. So if you're going to copy, you might as well do a good job of it. And if uh, if you like the physical buttons, I'm telling you what, this Pantech phone uh, really impresses. Hopefully their, their next outing will have a camera flash and yeah. we'll all be happy. So if you want to put down some money to purchase this thing, 99 bucks on Verizon with a two-year contract, which is a standard. You can go online and buy it there. Yeah. But you might also want to check out Amazon Wireless because they are selling this thing, same carrier, Verizon, two-year agreement, one penny. One so penny. It, uh, it's up to you. Just putting that out there. But, again, it's cheap as in low cost. How uh, does Amazon do that? I don't know. They, You know, they've got to be... It's got to be something to do with... Do you think they're subsidizing it themselves even more? Maybe they're just giving up Trying a to certain profit game? or whatever. That might be it. Because it seems like they would be pushing hard then to follow up to have you install their Amazon App Store. And, right. You know, hey, start buying apps from us. <laughs> yeah. I, I really wonder. I mean, because Verizon lets us use these phones, of course, full disclosure. Yeah. I wonder what their uh, thoughts are on that. Like, I wonder if they're like, we don't care. We still get you as a customer. Yeah. Well, you know, the device is really the, like, it's not the razor blade, it's the razor. And the blades are the monthly fees that you're going to be paying to Verizon. Totally. So, you know, their big income isn't from selling you the device. It's going to be the monthly thing. So, yeah, you're you're probably right. They probably just don't care. Mm -hmm. And especially if they're getting a lot more customers, which they probably aren't getting a ton more, but... Yeah, and I mean, this is America, so it's not like you can buy this phone through Amazon exactly. and then take it to another carrier or something. Our phone, you can't you can't do that. No. I mean, you can for like AT&T or whatever and T-Mobile, but <laughs> then the bands for data don't work all the way right. Mm-hmm. And it's, they thought that's right. It. You have to do some hard hacking if you want to get between Sprint and Verizon, too, so... So whatever. Unless you know. it's, what, is that still the same with for 4G? What are you talking about? Are the bands different on 4G? Between what carriers? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know I about AT&T and Verizon. T-Mobile, of course, is on 4G, which is right. uh, 3.5G. And Sprint is on L- is on. WiMAX and there's LTE. Yeah, WiMAX 4G. Yeah, and they're going to LTE <coughs> next year and stuff. Right. Sprint is in such a mess. Mm-hmm. But, you know, as much as people want to dog on Sprint, uh, I just read something today about these unfunded liabilities that AT&T and Verizon have for retirees. That Like, you know, like Social Security on the... You know, they talk about the United States Social Security is an unfunded liability. It's not on the yes. books, blah, blah, blah. You know, so the situation's worse than it looks. Well, it's pretty much the same thing at Verizon and AT&T. They have unfunded retiree liabilities. And so we're going to end up running into a bunch of financial problems at those companies. So yeah. Sprint, Sprint isn't the only early. one in trouble, you know. Sprint was just the... Uh, yeah, well, who knows what Sprint's uh, retirement liabilities look like. But they're uh, they're playing for a network rollout and, you know, profitability is not is not looking too well. Yeah. Google, please, please buy Sprint. Just, just do it. Do it already. A Sprint, like a Motorola Sprint Google thing. Yeah. I mean, Google already has this promiscuous relationship with Sprint. Yeah. You know, they're testing the Google voice features, you know, which I know you're real jealous of that because my number is ported to Google voice. And so like these phones, you know, we get them from Verizon I just assigned my regular phone number that you know I have. How'd you that everybody your, has. Wait, you ported your phone, your cell phone number to Google Voice? Yep, yep. Sprint has opened up their network so that they don't charge you. Like, because normally that would be a, an ETF. You'd be leaving their network and yeah. going. No, they let you port your number to Google Voice. Why no charge. Why would you do that? Why would you do that, Sprint? Because they're in third place and T-Mobile's getting gobbled up, and they got to start getting creative. That's why. <laughs> I see. 
So that's pretty creative. That's why they're letting the uh, unlimited stuff go for yeah. now. I mean, they just cut off bro- broadband. So, like, if you have a 4G right. WiMAX uh, thing that goes into a laptop, yeah, uh, they are not even grandfathering people in. What if you tether? Tethering is limited as well. Yeah. So, but that's what they're saying. It, it, if you if you're on these plans, which if you haven't heard, you need to call them up and say, either well, either you're gonna stick with it and then boom, you're limited, no grandfathering in, or this is your chance to get out of a contract yeah. without being charged an ETF because they're changing the contract materially. And again, this is for mobile broadband, and you can get out of a contract when the carrier does that. And you can go to someone better, like nobody. Oh yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, if if it's a hard cap or whatever, then T-Mobile is probably the best option because at least they don't charge you for overages. Yeah. Uh, but whatever. Nice. Soon, I'm sure that stuff will be trickling down. You know, <coughs> I'm surprised they you know they're leave, leaving it go this long. Now that Sprint's getting the iPhone, yeah, that stuff's gonna be you know there people who want unlimited plans. You go to Sprint. Sucking on the pipe. Yeah. So to speak, the. Uh, the tubes. The tubes. <laughs> Clogging the tube. The tubes are getting clogged. It's the internet there. crack pipe. <laughs> <laughs> Tell yes, you what, it is. it is like crack. Smartphones are the internet's crack pipe. <laughs> That's right. Well, if you want more of this crack, uh, you can go to theandroidtechshow.com. Tons of past episodes and show notes. Everything we just talked about, links to all the news stories, theandroidtechshow.com. Yeah, and just how I like my crack, you can have a little bit at a time if you follow us on Twitter, uh, that's Android Tech Show. We dole out those little pieces of information you just love that you just can't get enough of. That's right. And the first hit is always free on YouTube. You can visit youtube.com slash Android Tech Show. Watch some of our videos on there. Uh, the more views we get, the more, you know, the better chance we'll have of unlocking this account. Our other accounts don't have limits. The Android Tech Show still does. Yeah. And if you'd like to see more crackheads... Like yourself, visit the Blueberry like Podcast us. Network, <laughs> and that's blueberry.com, where you can find out some more great independent contact content. Whew. Yes. That's right. So visit our website. Uh, we get links on there to download our app, links to go to all these things that we just mentioned. If you don't want to remember or type them in or whatever, theandroidtechshow.com. Make sure to check out the Android App Show this week for everything that you need to know about ice cream sandwich and probably a few things you didn't even know you needed to know. That is a great name. I love Android names. <laughs> you know, the next one's Jelly Bean. Uh, they look cute. You oh, have like a little Jelly Bean like Androids. That could be cool. Or like a transparent Android with Jelly Beans inside it. There we go. And then like if you guess the right amount, then you win the device or something. Totally. Brilliant. That's what I'm going with. I just like ice cream sandwiches. Me too. <laughs> Way too much. Oh. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, I think that wraps up the show. Yeah. See you guys later. Bye. Alright. Fun times. <laughs>